Hello everyone and welcome back to Kuruna's Place Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Today we are going on to chapter 2, but which chapter 2? We got Rise, I think, yeah. Who wasn't a character you could play as in the first arena, and Naoto. We're gonna be doing both of them. Let's go with Rise's first. I raise one arm towards the mirror-lined wall and close my eyes. In my mind, I see a stage and the hazy shadow of a band. Glow sticks are of all different colors, shine in the pack seats. I'm looking at them from my mark, uh, indicated with a spot of the of Florence paint. The moment the countdown hits zero, a spotlight comes on. I reach towards the flooding light and become one with the stage. Stay. Yeah, this is probably going to be content ID, like, horribly. Maybe? I don't know. I actually kind of forgot you were a singer, too, to be honest. Like, yeah. I, I, when I hear idol, I forget that a lot of idols are singers as well, not just models. I don't know, like, the correlation, actually, to be quite honest. But I just know that a lot of times idol means singing as well. Your arms look weird. <sighs> Where are we? <laughs> As I calm my breathing and look towards the clock to check how long the performance took me, I see its hands pointing to two, which brings me back to reality in a hurry. Crap! I didn't take my bike today. I wonder if I can make the last train. Probably not. Wait, two in the morning? Night, everyone. I'm off for today. Or two in the afternoon, because I'm pretty sure trains go past two in the afternoon. I hardly address the people I pass as I fly out of the studio. After a mad dash to Okina, Okina Station, I barely make it into uh, make it into the stop train. <sighs> Made it. So it's two in the morning, right? I take a breather as the train slowly pulls out. The last train on the holiday on holiday is usually pretty empty, so I sit on an open seat and get my tunes for my bag. There's a new song on there that just gave me this. Af uh, they just gave me this afternoon. Today I felt uh, today felt so long for some reason. It's gotten a lot later than we expected. Are you still okay on time? No. You didn't have to give me a lift, you know. I'd have been fine. That's not the issue. Come on, I'm your manager. There is in, in you know, you know you. See, San seems so happy is because the news we got earlier. When our president called us back to the office from the shoot today, we were greeted with a new song for me and a detailed plan for my comeback. Still, I had no idea that the boss was putting together such a detailed plan for your comeback. Well, I'm grateful and all, but I just don't think I'm ready yet. That's not true. We've all seen how hard you've been working. That's not true. Let's rush into this so you take another vacation, like, or leave an absence, like, a year from now. You're much stronger than you were. I think the boss is making the right decision. Are you just flattering me, Inoue san? Inoue. Never intentionally. <laughs> you sang that new song we gave you today after just a short lesson. You even memorized the dance steps in record time. I wasn't any good, though. I got distracted by the steps and kept going off key. And I wasn't hitting the turns cleanly. I've still got a long way to go. Well, practice makes perfect. It's true. Even as far as discussion of my comeback goes, if Inoue-san hadn't come up with an excuse for why he couldn't get in contact with me until yesterday, the plans could have been sunk. say chan did something happen? Huh? I know that there's a part of your life you won't let me into, and that's okay. Well, yes, you are my manager, and nothing more. An idol doesn't need to tell her manager everything. But there's a difference between keeping things private and isolating yourself. Mm. You asked if you could get some days off during the long holiday, right? And you didn't seem too keen on today's session either. Did you have some other engagement in mind? No, you're just cutting me too much slack. Thanks, though. It's nothing to do with work. Yeah, I think she wanted to hang out with you. 
So many people are supporting me for my comeback, but no matter how much I throw myself into the rehearsal, all I can think about is how I was nothing but a burden in the incident yesterday. What do you say, John? I'm okay. Were you worried I'd quit again? I'm still set on getting back into showbiz once I shake off the rest from my hiatus. <laughs> I can tell that much from watching you practice. Still, maybe you need a breather. Huh? The publisher consulted me about maybe rescheduling the photo shoot. When I told them doing it later would be problematic since you're still a student, they decided to reschedule for another time. So, take a nice break tomorrow. You know I, son. But things will be busy after the long holiday. The success of your comeback project is on the line here. I really appreciate it. Can you let me off at Okina Station today? If I have tomorrow off, I want to stop by the studio and practice a little more. Mm -hmm. huh? But wouldn't it be late by the time you're done? Yeah, like two in the I morning, apparently. Home. There's not enough room at home. Please? I'll go straight home after I practice a little. Well, all right. But don't push yourself too Oh, hard. she's going to push. Push it to the limit, in fact. Probably. Though, you shouldn't coddle me so much either. Okay, you know son? I mean, to be fair, it didn't seem like coddling. It just seemed like practical business sense. But what do I know? I'm not a manager of an idol. I'd have no idea what I'd have to do for that. Though the train, uh, through the train window, I can see the countryside with only a few lights here and there. The train was empty to begin with, and it only gets emptier as we approach the final stop. A long holiday, huh? This holiday was supposed to cap off with just work and rehearsals. Even when I heard you senpai was coming back, I was the one who decided not to change my plans. When I told the others, they said stuff like, oh well, work's work, and hang in there. Kanji was the only one who acted like a kid, saying, what's more important to you, your work or senpai? That reminds me, Naoto-kun had to work during the holidays too. I bet Naoto-kun uh, wouldn't get all indecisive about these things. When I sigh and take out my cell, I notice I have an email. Oh, it's from Yukiko-senpai. It's a summary of what the investigation team talked about today and the time we've met uh, the time that we're meeting tomorrow. Is it 6 a.m.? That's early. I bet some of those guys are going to be late for Almost sure. Almost assuredly, but then again, tomorrow is never going to come. I laugh, uh, but it quickly turns into a sigh. I have tomorrow off thanks to Noe san. And while I'm happy I get to see everyone, I'm a little bummed out too. I couldn't do anything during that incident. I don't remember anything else about that day after I finished shopping for dinner at Junez. When I came to, I was already in the announcement room in the TV world under the surveillance of General Teddy. In the end, it turned out to be that General Teddy was Labrador's shadow taking on Teddy's form. The shadow was holding this event called the P1 Grand Prix and forcing my senpai to fight each other in it. Since I was captured, they used my voice and likeness to gourd everyone into hurting each other. I thought I sounded cool saying I had work, but I got kidnapped, imprisoned, and watched them use my face and voice to confuse everyone. At this rate, I can barely face Senpai and the others. Yusufai will be going back tomorrow. I think about Fukusan and who had who had such tremendous powers that she could help Mitsurasan group by describing what was going on in the TV world world even from outside. I, I wish I could be that useful. Hey, you know what? You never nuked me during the final boss battle, so you're you're higher on the list for me. What the? That was a weird place to cut the announcement off and turn all the lights red. All of a sudden, all the lights in the train turn off, and the train that had already begun to slow down to its last stop grinds to a halt. Oh no! A blackout? I look out the window to check. A huge red moon dominates the sky, and in the direction that the the train was heading, there looks to be a giant red cocoon. Is that fog? Is that Inaba's that way? I turn around. There's no one in the train. They've all disappeared. The train car was pretty empty, but I'm positive I wasn't the only passenger before. Wait, what's going on? All oh, right, my cell. Oh, that's dead. Thinking I might be able to find something out in the con out if I contact someone, I look at my phone. I look at the phone I'm still holding after checking my mail, but it seems to have turned off by itself since the screen remains black. No matter how many times I press the power button, it won't turn on. It's broken of all the times, guys, you senpai. 
Apart from the confusion, a sensation I know all too well starts to rise in me. I can't believe it, but there's no mistake. Shadows, I'm assuming. This feeling... it can't be. It's like I'm inside the TV. I'm moving before I can think twice. I yank open the door using the emergency lever and jump out to uh, onto the tracks. Watch out for the third track. I began running towards the Yasuo Yasu Inaba train station. Now that now's not the time to stay and cower here. To be continued. Okay. Well, that was a fast chapter. Confirming. Saving. Okay, so let's go to Naoto's then. Sure. The clock's ticking echoes through the room, and I look up from the file I hold. It seems I yearned for some mental stimulation to distract me from the sheer, sheer volume of information I am attempting to process. But when I look up, all that's before me are the tall stacks of files I brought in from the reference room. Uh, even when I cooperated with the, even when I cooperated with the investigation as a detective, I'd only been in this room a few times. They must have ushered me into the drawing room on the highest floor of Inima Station today in order to send a message: "Don't draw attention to yourself." I lower my hat to rest my eyes, and I spend some time thinking back on the conversation I had uh, a short while ago. I see. In other words. Nothing suspicious is apparent in the current Kirijo group. Correct. There are no factors that would necessitate deterring Mitsuru Kirijo or the shadow operatives which she leads. Man holding my report falls silent, pondering something. His reaction shows that he most likely foresaw what sort of report I'd hand in. The well-dressed man before me belongs to the Na National Police Agency Security Bureau Security Planning Division, or in brief form, the Public Safety Police. It was he who requested the uncover uh, the uncover investigation undercover investigation into the Mitsurusan status operation. Mitsuru Kirijo seemed to have some idea who stole her cargo. Yes, she did indeed. To begin with, the culprit knew the contents of the cargo, which even Miss Kirijo herself did not fully understand. It follows that the culprit in this case was someone with intimate knowledge of the Kirijo group's dark secrets. How Mitsuru Kirijo deals with this culprit will surely shed more light upon her true motives. Probably gonna execute him, I'd imagine. Half of that is true, and half of it is sophistry. I need to discover the trump card that public safety is hiding. For most, li uh, for most likely that the trump card will lead us to the culprit of this case, the one who stole Labrys and threw her into the TV world. After a moment of silence, the man places a stack of thick folders before me. If he had prepared this in advance, that means he was weighing his options. He knows of my intentions, yet he must have made the decision, decision that what they stand to gain is worth the risk. Report to us again when you find out more. With that, the man leaves the room. It seems my gamble paid off. Whether I find out more or not, it's certain that something will happen. Lapras kidnapper hasn't been caught, and the case is ongoing. Even now, they may lack. Uh, they may be development somewhere. My friends on the investigation team must be having a strategy meeting at the Fu Court right now. Though it's been a while since any of us have seen you, Senpai, so the conversation may have already digressed. Sighing, I force aside the twinge of loneliness and drop my gaze into the file that my gamble won. The Kirijo Ergonomics Research Laboratory. An organization specializing in research upon shadows. Hmm. What I demanded of the public safety was an investigation document on the Kirijo Group Research Institutes, which no longer exists. The founder of that, is, that institute was Mr. San's grandfather, uh, Katsu Karijo. The contents of that report were filled with matters that were hard to believe. The Dark Hour, a different world populated by shadows that seemed to intrude on the real world. The mysterious, almost alien artifacts known as Plumes of Dusk that can induce a personality. Humanoid robots called anti-shadow suppression weapons that were developed to oppose shadows. Artificial Persona users who gained their abilities with special drugs. Had I not seen Igasan and Labrys with my own two eyes, the supernatural contents of this file would seem ludicrously implausible. You know, except for the whole, you know, you fought shadows before in the TV world and your own Persona and such like that. A flood of shadows and the manifestation of Personas. 
There are many similarities to what we experienced. The chief difference is that their catastrophe was artificially induced in the name of research. I sense an unwavering commitment to duty from Misura-san and her team. Though they, like us, are Persona users, the horrors in this, this file must be why I detected a very different type of resolve from them. I hesitate to look into such matters without their consent, but I doubt they would volunteer much. From what I can deduce, based on this, the culprit in Labrys' case is without a doubt related to Carrijo, or and Ergo Research. The clue that leads to the truth has to be here. And if by chance something were to happen to Mitsuru-san and her people, we would need to know more about our common enemy. Mm -hmm. Shuji Akutsuki took the position of chairman at Gekko Kanhai after Ergo Research was disbanded. Mitsuru-san went there. Deceased in 2009. Cause of death. Falling from the school's observatory. Was it suicide? There is no other information in regards to him in the document I gained from public safety. The simplicity of the section in regards to this Suji, an obviously important person, oddly left an impression on me. Is that no, no, it would say to be continued. I was gonna say, is that the end, really? I finished reading over the materials, but to be honest, it tells me little. Most of the principals involved are already deceased, including. Matsuru's grandfather, Suji, and the Persona users whose abilities were artificially awakened. Oh! Oh, what the hell was her name? The Redhead. Is that canon that she died? Ah, oh, that's sad. Still, I do learn something. The uh, culprit's objective in Labrys' case had similarities to the purpose of uh, Ergo Research. Uh, to literally gather shadows in order to fuse with them again. Uh, if they can... Uh, if this if that was the objective, wouldn't the TV world have been an ideal place for a test run? It may be best if I check inside of the TV world once more. When I open my cell phone to share my findings, scant though they may be, I notice that the hour is late. It almost it's almost the next day. It's a bit late to call them. You can call me any time, Naoto. I think I heard thunder earlier. Could it have rained? That word rain gives me a pause. During the incident with Labrys, the Midnight Channel was broadcasting again. If her case is truly ongoing, does that mean it could come on tonight? A bad feeling crosses my mind. A call at this hour? From an unknown number. Hello. I got through. Miss Detective? Uh, Hi, Labrys. Now Tokun, right? That voice. Is that you, Labrys? What's the matter? Listen up, because we got a big problem. <laughs> Mitsura-san and the others were on their way to Inaba, but they've gone missing! Missing? So we were gonna go look for them, but these weird guys came barging into the Shadow Operative's lab! I'm the only one who got out! The Shadow Operative's research lab was attacked. Could it be the enemy? No, that's not it. This is most likely- Alice, Calm down. Can you describe anything unique about the people who invaded your headquarters? Unique? Um... They came in a big group, they wore suits, they showed this paper-looking thing, uh, and they said something about Oh, it's the cops. <laughs> Just as I thought, public safety. I had my suspicions, but they were, there can be no mistake. Though the Kagrijo group and public safety are formally in, in cooperation, public safety privately has a low opinion of the shadow operatives. Hence, they request that I perform an undercover investigation. They must have found out about Mitsuru-san's disappearance and used it as an opportunity to launch a compulsory investigation. But Mitsuru-san's disappearance, could it really be related to public safety's move? Labrys said a moment ago that Mitsuru-san and her people were headed to Inaba. Why? Well, while I think carefully, sorting through this new information, I asked Labrys for more details. I understand. What's your present situation? I can't go back to the lab, right? Even if I could, I wouldn't know what to do without Mitsuru-san around. But then I found out the Shadow Operatives got these special folks who only get called up in emergencies. I just met up with them a minute ago, and we're about to go look for Mitsuru-san and them. Understood. I'll cooperate as well. I'm sure the others won't say no either. We'll all try to search for Mitsuru-san. Really? Thanks! Labrys, there's something else I'd like to ask. Why was Mitsuru-san headed for Inaba? If I remember right, they found a weird shadow reading over there, so they were gonna go look into it. A weird shadow reading? 
Uh, an abnormal shadow reading is detected in Inaba, and Mitsuru-san and her people are going missing when they head out to investigate. Even if this is unrelated to the public safety, uh, and to the public safety matter, I can't overlook this detail. Mitsuru-san and her people are Persona users, and extremely skilled ones at that. If they are in a situation with no means of contacting a help, then whatever enemy they face must be formidable. And the first such enemy who comes to mind is the culprit who kidnapped Labrys and forced us to fight in the P1 Grand Prix. She said the reading spiked all of a sudden. Did something happen over there? Hmm. Nothing springs to mind. Oh, sorry. Hold on a moment. I checked the clock on the wall of the drawing room. It's almost midnight. If there was an abnormal shadow reading, the Midnight Channel could be involved. I need to find a room with a TV. I'm sorry, but let's continue this on the move. We should meet up at the very least. Actually, is that a helicopter I hear in the background? Yeah, I'm surprised you can tell. We have a maid piloting one right now. A maid? A personal helicopter and a maid piloting it. I'd never thought of my family as poor, but thinking back at the limousine, the Carrillo clan, seem, <laughs> clan seems to be on a completely different level. Hmm. Let me think of a place where a helicopter could land around here. Oh, goodbye. As I continue to talk while walking down the hallway, all the lights suddenly turn off. Though it is midnight, this is a police station. There should be several officers still stationed here, even at this hour. However, in defiance of these facts, an unnatural stillness pervades the air. A blackout. No, that's not it. The roaring helicopter routers on the other end of the line have also fallen silent. Lavers? Oh, shit. That helicopter's gonna fall out of the sky, isn't it? My cell phone has gone dead, as if the batteries were drained. I try a few times, but it won't turn on. Have all the electronics here stopped working so suddenly? I open a nearby door to get a better look at my environment. The empty room is hazily lit by an eerie red glowing a glow coming from the window. Walking to get a clearer view, I grasp I gasp at the sight outside. An, obvi an obvious pall has fallen upon the quiet rural town. Oh, that's fog. creepy. Seeing the town enveloped in fog, I, what is that tower? I can't help but remember last year's case. With the foreboding feeling that the situation has taken a turn for the worse, I quickly leave the strangely empty end of a station. I'm assuming that tower is where we're going to all head. Because that is uh, definitely not something that uh, was there before. A warp town. Hmm. So this is probably... I'm trying to get a feel of how this is going to go, right? So it looks like everything that's connected is going to have a path, but there might be branching paths to the story. These could be separate character paths, though, too. Right? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. My god, there's actually a lot more than I originally thought. Alright, well, next time we're going to go on to Yosuke's part. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, press like below. If you're not subscribed yet, want to hear my videos so I can check out some of the content, see if it's to your liking. Once again, thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.